Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends, welcome back. I'm green, it's a thing. Um, today we are looking at the Mitchell Feet on the Ground palette, I believe that's what it's called. I don't know, I'm old and confused. It looks like this. Yeah, so I used that to create this look. If you want to see what I think of it and see some always interesting face swatches and this is the video for you, do please keep on watching. Do I look manic? Absolutely. Welcome back. Uh, my skin is being weird, but you know, whatever. Anyways, I have the Mitchell palette in a pouch, which is totally unnecessary, but it is what it is. It is, is it the, the on, on the ground or under the feet? Something about ground. Anyways, it's the green palette. You've already seen this look um, on multiple occasions. You'll have seen it hopefully on releases or not, unless it turned out to be a complete disaster. And you'll have seen it in the intro. So this is all what it looks like. Cool. Hmm. I'm excited. So I am going to do my face swatches because, you know, why not? And I'm going to do it row by row because it's my channel and I can do what I want. Um, okay, so we have Salt Bay. We have Limeade. We have Bored in the House. That feels like something Elena would say. Um, Angelina, not Jolie, just a random Angelina. And bless you. God bless. There we go. I mean, look, my skin is being weird and patchy at the moment. I think it's because it's gotten very, very dry. Like, and like my skin has gotten dry, but also like the weather has gotten dry. Look, I'll blame it on other things, but not me. I am now going into the second row. Do I know what I'm doing? Absolutely not. Oh, that is a vivid yellow. So this is orchid. Not like or like, not like the flower, like the letter or, or I can't pronounce or properly. PR. There we go. You're welcome, Mister. Chameleon. Mm. which is what I'm looking like right now. We have Tulip, C-H-E-W, Lip, uh, then Ground, and then Breaking. It's very light, isn't it? Which that'll do, Pig, that'll do. It is what it is. We're going into the middle row now. We have Mama's Garden. And Earth Child, Descent, Tiger Lily, and Clay Baby. Hmm. It's really funny, like I, I thought it was more of a green palette than it actually is, but it really isn't a green palette, which is fine, but you know, I love green. I had a whole thing around when this first launched of not getting it and if you followed me, you'll know how ridiculous and temperamental I am. Look, I'm a bougie bee. Um, this actually describes me. A mood! Yes. Then we have Bittersweet. There we go. That'll do. We have Off-Roading. Hmm. Uh, Fool's Gold. Not the best watches, are they? And Venom. God, I'd love to see that movie again. I love Tom Hardy. Anybody else love Tom Hardy? God, I love him. And obviously he would be super attractive to me right now because... <laughs> Ooh, I'm apparently tearing apart my beauty room. Uh, we have Ammo, because he put in loads of M's because that's just what he does. Grass, I hope he means like, you know, the thing on the ground. Um, Ant. Greener and chemtrail. There is no such thing as chemtrails, but there we go. Anyways, this is it. I look I'm so beautiful. You're welcome. What do we think? Mitchell, if you ever watch this, which you won't because I'm a nobody, but like, is this what you intended for your makeup? You're welcome. You're welcome.
Okay, you guys can't tell Elena this, but I kind of didn't wash my brushes after the last time that I used them. I know, I'm clearly going straight to hell, but it is what it is. It's not the worst thing that could happen. Uh, um, I've obviously primed my lids. I've used the Juvia's Place Concealer. It's in the shade 24. It's brilliant, it's very, very light, and it works for me. I'm using this Lois Cosmetics brush and questioning as to exactly what it is that I'm doing. As per usual, I'm going to use board in the house. There's some board in this house. There's some board in this house. There's... Look, I was talking to my friend uh, Rebecca the other day, and she was saying about she's actually one of my Patreons, by the way. I have started a Patreon. Look, I'm as confused as you are. Who knew? And um, she was just kind of saying about how her Spotify most playlist came up, and uh, one of the songs was WAP, and uh, the other song was Burn from Hamilton and <laughs> I was like the juxtaposition of these two is amazing it pleases me so much um uh, okay so obviously I'm 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 playing with this but uh, it's not exactly a new palette you guys well like it's new as in it's come out in the last two months or so but it's not new in terms of makeup because let's face it everything move so fast so I figured there's no point in me really you know doing a an in-depth review like I'll do a review obviously but um I figured mostly I'll just chat a little bit because why not and I thought I would chat a little bit about psychology and some things that I've been reading or thinking about recently because um you know why not so it's a mishmash of a couple of different things because it's my channel and I can do what I want. So there was this study that I read recently because I'm obviously I'm a lecturer um, in psychology and we have to keep up to date with all of these bits and pieces and all of the developments in the field. And there was this study that I was reading recently um, by Westgate um, and colleagues. So there were three of them and all, I can't remember the rest of the, the the researchers, I tend to just remember the first one. And it was published in 2014 and it was called The Pain of Doing Nothing, which I think we can all agree is an actual pain. So what she did was she had um, participants um, basically placed into a room where they had nothing to distract them. It was just sheer monotony and they were kept in there for a period of time. And the only thing that was in there was a button. Sorry. I paused for dramatic effect and, and then forgot what it was that I was going to say. Um, but there was a button and, you know, makes me just think of, what you call it, sugar babes and push the button. I am using this same brush again and I'm going into Earth Child. Now, what was the purpose of this button? This button... You know, you didn't have to press it, there was no onus on you to press it, but if you pressed it, you would get an electric shock. Okay, so I think we can agree, electric shocks, not great, not exactly ideal. They have been used, like, in previous research to, like, even decrease, like, self-injurious behaviours, etc. That's how, you know, aversive um, electric shocks are. Now, they made it so that it was mild and it wouldn't, like have permanent skin damage but like it was definitely it was there and it was it was a thing so they weren't in any way told you must press the button or anything like that but what I found interesting was that because essentially they were put into this monotonous situation there was nothing there to distract them for a period of time people found their own thoughts so aversive and being left to do nothing that people everyone pressed the button more than once. There was one outlier, which, you know, we don't really like in studies because they really skew the data, but he pressed the button 190 times. Is he okay? <laughs> That's the question. But the authors came to the conclusion, essentially, that we find our own company and, you know, being left without things to do so aversive that we will engage in, like, anything, even self-injurious behaviours, to essentially distract ourselves from it. Same brush again, I'm going into Chameleon. Chameleon. And that made me think of essentially the last couple of months because 
that's where we've been. That's what we've had to do. We we have been stuck with very little options, very little stuff that we can do with ourselves. And obviously there's been a, a huge surge in terms of mental health issues. And this study, I think, really helps to explain it and why people are feeling this way at the moment. So I just thought it was really, really interesting that there's this study that was conducted a couple of years ago and it does kind of explain where we're at right now. So yeah, that was one of my thoughts. I also had another thought. There's um, a psychologist called Viktor Frankl. He's quite well known and um, he started off um, a branch of psychology called logotherapy. Um, now, psychologists have for years basically been trying to figure out why are humans the way they are? You know, what, what drives us? What is our purpose, essentially? Our real data. Um, I am going to find a, a floof brush. A floof brush, yes, is floof. So I'm taking this blush dry brush. It's nice and floofy. And I'm going into chameleon again because I can do what I want. Anyways. Viktor Frankl, he came up with logotherapy, like I said, and previously psychology had attempted to explain, you know, the purpose of human beings and why do we do the things that we do. So Freud would say things that was like our our um, capacity for desire, our, our push to, to, to want very sometimes carnal needs, you know, he was like, it's all about the it and the ego and the superego and all this sort of thing, right? Which... There's something to it, but I wouldn't be the biggest Freud fra fan. I think his work on defense mechanisms is arguably the best thing that he came up with, I think. His other stuff is a bit contentious. Let's not even talk about his sampling uh, methods and his poor, poor research methods. Very poor. Um, we'd have had the likes of Adler, who was... A colleague of Freud's um, he was part of the psychodynamic approach but they actually ended up not falling out but well sort of falling out they they were not friends towards the end but Adler said it was all about a, a, a strive for power a yearning for power and that's what kind of drove human beings but Viktor Frankl thought something different he thought that human beings had an innate need to look for meaning in their lives. I'm using the same brush again, put it through the colour switch, and I'm going into Earth Child yet again. So this was quite different. Now, what I find interesting about Viktor Frankl is he is he brings his own experiences um, as a human being into his research and into his theories because he was actually an Auschwitz survivor. So he said actually human beings it's all about their search for meaning and assigning meaning to life and he said that we kind of do this in in three main ways the first is via our attempt to um, strive for achievement or excellence so that can be through our work so things like gaining achievement that's why a lot of people will um, describe themselves by their job like they'll say like I'm a teacher I'm a lecturer I do it all the time I'll say things like I'm a lecturer I'm a psychologist etc and we search for meaning in that sense that we we ascribe our life as having meaning by the vocation that we have or the job that we have. Now, not everyone has that and, you know, obviously things happen and, and that is not always the case. Using the same brush again and I'm going into a uh, board in the house, which does link with what we were saying with the Westgate study. And I said, well... If you don't have that, you also have uh, meaning through family and friendship connections. So how important it is to have people around you and, and a support network and people that you love and care for, which is all well and good. But he then argued there was a third thing, and this is born out of his experience in the concentration camps, because obviously when you were a, a victim of the concentration camps, which... Oh, well, if anyone tries to disagree with me and says that it wasn't a thing, I am actually going to get annoyed. Um, 
but part of the horror of it was you know so much was taken away from you you were ripped away from your family so that's straight away that's one of your searches for meaning gone you know you're ripped away from family from friends you had no idea what happened to them they they separated people out you know it was just horrific and obviously you no longer had your job you no longer had this identity through your vocation etc and he said that what separated people in terms of their ability to survive psychologically in the concentration camps was their strive for meaning through struggle and adversity and the meanings that you would give that um so he said you know a lot of people you know they really understood that this may be linked to you know their religion their faith their um community and being part of a wider faith group and it kind of served them in that respect i am taking this melt brush it is the transition you're welcome and i'm going into ammo ammo put this on my face so i thought that was really really interesting and again i linked it to our current situation because I don't know if you know but there's a pandemic I know I know I was shocked when I found out about it this morning as well just saying but it kind of links with this massively because I mean there's a lot of people that got furloughed or their jobs uh, hours got cut or they weren't able to do things like I'm not able to go in and teach in the same way so it's kind of impacted my identity as a lecturer as a teacher it's quite upsetting, you know, I think a lot of people have found it really, really difficult. Um, but he, he would state that, like, even, like, things like we aren't able to see our family. And that's been really upsetting. Quite a few people um, not getting the support there. So a lot of people have been trying to ascribe meaning to this. You know, like, even early on, people saying things like, oh, nature is recovering. You know, maybe it's the earth trying to get balance and trying to ascribe some sort of meaning to it or understanding that, you know, work isn't everything and, you know, family and friends are super, super important. And I've heard a lot of people even saying now that Christmas has kind of changed its meaning for them, that they would have been quite materialistic beforehand. But now they're kind of saying, oh, well, actually, now I, I totally get that there there is a, a more kind of fundamental meaning to this um that it's it's about people that we care about and you know being with our family etc so i'm just going to take this collection glam crystals metallic liquid eyeliner um does it say what shade it's in golden hour three but i don't know what i'm doing and uh just yeah Put that there. Yeah, you'll do nicely. So I thought that was a really, really interesting point on how people are kind of clearly trying to ascribe meaning to everything that's happening at the moment. So, yeah. Oh, this is so pretty. If you haven't picked these up, they're so cheap and cheerful. Um, and I just think the, the quality and the pigment is great. Elena, do you have these? If not, I'm going to have to get some and send them to you. I know I sent a few of these to Maria, who has her own channel. She doesn't do makeup on it anymore. She does all nail stuff because she's gone back to college to basically be a nail tech. And she's so bloody good at it. I've said this before, I need less talented friends because it's quite upsetting for me. Am I doing a proper cut crease? No. It is what it is. What I'm going to do now because i can i can do what i like it's my channel i am just going to try and even that out and bring that down a little bit more i am going to take some concealer and cut out a bit of the crease because that's the way i like to do it it kind of leaves it a little bit sharper because i am a clumsy af so we'll be back in a minute i promise are they even no but was that the purpose probably should have been oh well i'm not very good at this um yeah i actually what i did was i took some of the collection glam crystals in what shade a funk three yes i'll put a little bit of that on top because i don't know i felt a bit like i wanted some extra zhuzh 
you know, you know, technical terms here. Um, what do I want to do next? Um, I'm, I was very bold and like didn't clean my brushes and now I'm sort of paying for it. Nah, this is why I have backup brushes. I'm fine. I'm taking this uh, Jessup 237 Detailer. Oh god, I have so many brushes to clean now, it's ridiculous. And I'm excited. I'm going to go into Fool's Gold. This one here. Okay. Do you know what? I'm enjoying this so far. Yes, I was very salty over the way that the launch was handled. I didn't feel it was done very well, but the quality of the palette does seem to be quite good. So, you know, I'll give it to them. Now, let's see. How is this performing? How are the shimmers? Not bad. Not amazing. Not, not amazing. Maybe I have to wet them. I don't love when I have to wet shimmers. You know, shouldn't have to work that hard for things. Particularly when it's a, was it a £40 palette? And then I had to pay like a frightening amount of shipping. Yeah, it's not bad though, it's not bad. It's not the worst. Is it the best? Also no. Uh, let's shove you there. But no, I'm glad I've got it because I was having massive FOMO. And it, does that happen to anybody else? It hurts my little feelings. Oh my god, like I can't even see what I'm doing. Am I vaguely hitting where I'm meant to be hitting? Who knows? Because I'm trying to have it so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Because you learn so much from me. I'm so lazy. I'm just like, oh yeah, here's a partial cut crease. It's so new. So innovative. Oh well. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I hope you enjoyed my weird psychology rants. I had like a little psychology rant the other night to a friend of mine and he was like, you say such odd things and I was like hmm yeah true I'm going into mama's garden now I just want to put a little line of it nothing massive oh god that's very pick up -y. and I just want to put a little bit of this here okay that's very green I don't want a lot of it though I don't want it to be the major green because I am going for a grungy look because Missy was like Grungy look for releases and rants. So, did it, did it turn out grungy, guys? Did it? Did it? Did I save it? Who knows? There we go. I think that's actually quite nice. This brush is amazing, the Jessup 237. If I could just have like a million of these. Well, not like a million, like that would be, that'd be insane. Where would I put all of them? But like, if I had like 10 of these, 20 even. Why do, why would I say even? Like it, well, I was compromising, that's more. Um, but if I had a load of these, I would be so happy. Just cause it seems to be the one that I use probably the most out of all of the Jessups. Yeah. I really like them. Same brush again because I'm more lazy and I'm going into grass because that's a much more grungy, olivey toned one. And I'm going to smash that out here. I know, I know there's very clear lines and borders between them, but you know, we will, we will send out, um, you know, kind of appropriate parties to liaise with them and, you know, Show them that there are commonalities between them. There we go. That's nice. I feel good about this. Which is nice. Because, you know, it would suck if I didn't. I'm glad I didn't have to actually wet them in the end. Are they the most intense? Not really. I'm going to see if there's any difference if I add with a finger. No, not massively. Now I've just dirtied my finger for no reason. Yeah. Oh well. Look, first world problems. Ah, oh, where did the brush go? Can't see it. There we are. I know, I know. Like I'm a mess of a human being. This is what you subscribe to. Or not. Maybe you've unsubscribed now. Probably wise. You'll learn nothing. Except hardship. And how to make excuses. Okay guys, you know the drill. I'm taking my Sigma E36. Um, it's 
similar to the Morphe 562, but more expensive. So if you liked the Morphe 562, you'll like this, if you feel like being a bit bougie. And I'm just going to bridge between these two. Um, I didn't take anything onto the brush. So just FYI, swishy, swishy. Because I can. Because I can, can, can. Sorry, I'm just thinking of um, Milan Rouge. Uh, I'm near the end, so well done you on, on tolerating this. I'm taking my Transition brush and I'm going into the shade Greener. And I think I might go in with Ammo. There, bitch, are you happy? I did it. So I'm picking up the two together and I'm just going to smack them there. There. And I'm just swishy swishy. And it's just a very lazy look. Um, nothing complicated. But I like it. I've had a long day. I haven't even. I'm just tired. <laughs> I've like slept in severely because I have such bad insomnia right now. That it is what it is. I'm just going to take this Morphe brush. It's part of the eye set thing. And I'm going to go into the shade Alignment. Why? I don't have to give you a justification. I can do what I want. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to pop a little bit up here. I can do what I want. Probably should have done that earlier. Oh, well. I'll include it as an afterthought. There, that'll, that'll do. Okay, so I'm going to go and finish off the rest of my face and yes, I will be back. So I'm back, straighten my hair, put a hairband on. It's a whole thing. I know I'm wearing white uh, around makeup. I was just asking for trouble. Uh, this is the finished look. My skin is absolutely horrific at the moment. It's very, very difficult, you know, first world problems. But I will zoom you into the eyes so you can see what it is that I did. So this is what the eyes look like. I am taking off the glasses so you can kind of see the detail. I put a little bit of a glitter liner. I used the uh, LA Splash one. It's in uh, Grindelou. So it looks like this. I put that just over some black liner. I put kind of these like little foily things because I thought that was kind of cute. Because you know, why not? But that's, excuse me, what it looks like. And I'm using some eyelower lashes that are quite frankly, I don't know who won the battle. Um, You know, it was a, it was an interesting war. Yeah, look, look at that. Disgraceful. Anyways, they're new. Um, I'll break them in or they'll break me. Who knows? So yeah, this is the look. So all in all, I think it performed pretty well. I quite like the look that I came up with. Um, okay, in terms of rating it, I would give this an 8 out of 10. Okay, first things first. Why? Why, 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 why? Um, I get that it'll be good for like when we're traveling, whenever that happens again. But also when I'm traveling, I wouldn't tend to bring a big a big palette with me, so that kind of defeats the purpose just a little bit. Um, I am taking points off because I think it's quite expensive for what it is. The shimmers perform okay, I wouldn't say they are the most amazing shimmers I've ever had. The mattes were lovely, they blended out really, really nicely, but I would just kind of say that that's pretty standard at this point, like most brands have figured out how to do a good matte. I think the price is £40. For what it is, I think it. I would be happier if it was thirty pounds. Is my general feeling, and I mean the fact that they were selling on Black Friday for twenty four pounds. I bought this when it was forty pounds, because I am impatient. Um, the fact that they can sell it for twenty four pounds and still make a profit, that kind of bugs me. So I would say it should be more thirty pounds. That's more indicative, I think, of where it should be. But overall, I think it's a pretty, pretty darn good palette. If you like the colour story, if you want to support Mitchell, then this is something that you may enjoy. I did get the other palette. Let me know if you want to see that soon. But other than that, that is the end of the video. Do please like, comment and subscribe. Do please share because sharing is caring. Unless, of course, it's an STD. In which case, you know, wrap it up. Don't be gross. But that's it. That's the end of the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.